All right, I'm gonna turn the computer. I'm gonna turn the computer. I said up. keep it on. Wait, I want to hear what second Alan has to think. There's a lot of things going on in this world, and we only hear from Alan. Why don't we ever hear from me? Alan? Alan. Oh, Alan. it's like an echo now. Damn, now there's two of me. Now there's two of me. Now Tom. All right, I'm out of here. I gotta get up with this. Damn, this is a. Uh, this is like the horror stories of whoever made Auto Tune. Property box. First off, man, how have you been? I've been great, man. Um, I've been doing good. I've been, I've been okay. I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> you've been all right. You've been good, and you've been so okay. All right, a little bit of a roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it's meh. Like it's not like, hey, man, I'm doing great. But yeah, you know, things are things are okay. Things are everything's steady. You know. All right. I see you got the shop booming over there. Bunch of different colors all over the spot. That's some yeah, cool interior good. design. I like that color. Very right. warming. That wall color is called coral. It's coral blossom. Coral blossom? Yeah. Oh, man. If I was ever a dancer, I would consider that name. Coral blossom? When you say dancer, do you mean like stripper or just yes. like, okay. Hey, I guess if I was like a ballet dancer and they allowed you to come up with like cool exotic names, yeah, I'd go by that too. But yeah, mainly stripping. <laughs> I always said when I was, probably when I was like a teenager, if I ever got a six pack, I would be a stripper. Did you ever get a six pack? I have never had a six pack. Ah, oh, man. You know, we all have six packs, right? It's just like just cutting the fat down. No, we don't. Yeah. No, like we all have like our abdomens are like shaped like the six pack. It's just we got to trim the fat and like tone it up. I'm 80% sure that's true. Well, thanks for making me feel better. <laughs> yeah, you got a six pack, dog. It's not too late. I, um, I had the same I'm thing. Wait, what's up? You have, same, you have the same thing, what? You trying to get a six pack to be a stripper? Did not necessarily be a stripper, but I was like, all right, well, you know, I have my shirt on a lot. I'm going to this pool. I have my shirt on. I'm sick of this. Kind of cool if I had a six pack. I never followed through with it, though. I tried. I did make various attempts throughout life to get a six pack. Let's, let's unpack that. Um, why do you wear a shirt? Not now. No, 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 no. Now I stunt. Um, but you know, like you okay. know, you're a kid, middle school or whatever. You know, you got the chest scar and all that. And I was like, you know, I went through a little chubby phase when I was 12 and 13, not 14. Yeah, I was a little chubby a little bit at times when I was learning how to swim. Yeah. Okay. I was making sure it wasn't like recently. You still because I, I also had the same insecurities because you know my nipples are a little larger than other males. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They so are. I was insecure about my about my nipples all my life. So I. But I, now I free the nip and I don't I don't care. But I was because, you know, I've said it, I've been saying it recently. Like, I don't think that men should wear shirts at, at the pools and beach and should be comfortable with themselves because it's your body. And once that shirt gets wet, we can see anyway. So it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, if you want to go to the pool with a shirt on, better hope there's no super soakers around because you get hit. We're going to see the flop. Uh, exactly. but it's it, it is empowering. I'll say that, you know, a lot of times we don't use that for like male bodies and such, uh, but it is empowering when like, you know, you, you used to have insecurities, whether it be your very large nipples are uh, not having a six pack and then one day for whatever reason, just being okay with it. Yeah. Recognizing like, oh, that's okay. And you actually feel good about taking your shirt off because it's like, oh, now I, I no longer have this fear. That part's kind of cool. It's the same. It's the same thing about women embracing their sexuality and like twerking all over the place and just being sexual online like a lot of it's, it's funny because i see I actually see a lot of straight males like giving them backlash for being sexual which is kind of weird like don't you like this but you know what i mean they they are comfortable with their sexuality now and now they can flaunt it all all over the mm. place so it's kind of like the same thing you know what i'm saying like older dudes. embracing themselves older dudes usually have a problem with that you got some snoop dogs seeing it and he'll have some criticisms which i think is the funniest thing when snoop spoke out about the whole wop thing I was like, really? Snoop? <laughs> this song really? is at least 30% inspired by you. Um, really, really, Mr. Bitches and Hoes? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's 
Yeah, shout out to women, you know, embracing the bodies and sexuality. And shout out to all the boys out there. Uh, I guess men, my bad. Shout out to all the men out there uh, embracing their bodies and sexualities. But I guess, you know, if you're a teenage boy, uh, you know, appreciating your body, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Right. Now, let's, I want to ask you, how, how, are, how are you doing, though? Because this is, this is now March. This yeah, has yeah. been, it's been, if people don't know, they were listening to Proper Ebonics. They know. Um, they know. All, all February, you stayed off social media. Like, they know. How, how are you doing now? Are you, are you back on? What's, what's going on? I'll tell you how I'm doing, man. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I did it. Um, I have some takeaways. I, I did some reflecting uh, after uh, anti social February. One of them being, I got to find a new name for this experiment. Um, but yeah, one, one of the first things I noticed, I didn't, one, a lot of time to myself. A lot of time to myself, I felt less obligation to respond to minimal messages, like tasks almost. Uh, like, you know, like, oh, I got to message this person, happy birthday, or, uh, oh, I got to uh, check this thing or post this thing. Uh, that's one. And I know it's just less, and I, you may get some of this too, because I feel like I got a little bit of it from you. It's like when you're out or when you see something noticeable, you're almost inclined, maybe even obligated to take a photo of it. Mm-hmm. Of like, oh, you know, that's, I can make content out of this. This could be something yeah. funny. And without having social media, the platform there, that went away. And I thought, I thought that was freeing in a way. It was like, oh, if I want to do this, I can do it if I want to. But I can also just let this pass and just have it be a moment that I experience, uh, which sounds cheesy, but that, that was definitely a big takeaway, not feeling uh, a, a sense of having to make content um, on those platforms, at least. The writing still happened, um, but right. in terms of that. Um, yeah, I would say that's the biggest one. Second, that I think is the what's going to motivate me to continue doing it. Possibly, we are one, one of our big uh, hesitations as comedians is like you know you got to have that online presence and all that stuff. You have to be online. Uh, a booker reached out to me via text. Uh, they found my number, and I, I, for some reason they got there. I gave. Oh, you <laughs> was it, uh, was that you? So I guess a comedian that was on a show with you reached out to me like yo this booker is looking for kirk can i get kirk's oh, number oh, <laughs> well good looking out on that <laughs> yeah, <good looking. laughs> yeah so who knows maybe if this this note maybe wouldn't exist if uh, proper bonics wasn't here but they reached out to me um to do a show i couldn't do it but that was one of my hesitations like damn booker's not gonna be able to find me sort of thing but it was it was reassuring to see that people will make the effort if they already know who you are sort of thing yeah yeah i think i think that people will make the effort but i would be afraid alone just of that because i know there's bookers that won't make the effort and it's not like they don't want you on the show but it's kind of like what's well, the other guys right on facebook i'm not going to go like you know what i mean searching uh, i feel like i'm not that other guy though i feel like i'm on some other like <laughs> um but i feel like i don't know i feel like uh there's acquired taste and if they're looking for me they're looking for me maybe that's uh me being on my bullshit but uh yeah that was that was nice and you know i probably will get back on i've signed back on instagram once i found that generally speaking i'm disinterested i'm kind of i'm i will say this this is my last note because i don't want to uh monopolize it with just my social media presence uh the first day so march 1st is the most I felt uh, not pressure, um, but an urge to go onto social media. Like that was the first time I was like, oh, I'm excited to do it. And I didn't like right. that. I didn't like that. I was like, I sense that this is pulling me back in. And like I mentioned, I did go back on Instagram, check messages, and I found myself like scrolling for about 10 seconds. Yeah. It made me sick. I logged out again. Um, so, I'll be back, I'm sure, especially when shows start happening more frequently and all that. Um, but I think now I'm just going to kind of not get rid of it completely. But my heart is leaning towards just not using it as frequently. Yeah, I think it's a good, I think having it just to for the bookers to check your messages, things like that. But to get back into the whole getting on it every day, looking for content to post, scrolling every day, yeah, I think that you might not need it. You know what I'm saying? You see, fine. You know, it's not like I yeah. feel like that month did you well. 
Yeah, I would say generally speaking, this is a good experiment. Um, I like making content too, though. So like, you know, maybe it's one of those things where like, oh, okay, if I feel the urge to put something out there, I can, and then just log off and never see any of the responses. Um, but I'll be back if the people are fretting. Like, hey, I'm not going to get that happy birthday red balloon emoji from Kirk. You're going to get it. Uh, just maybe through text. So right, that's right. my report. I would, uh, I would I'd recommend people uh, give it a shot. Give it a shot. Now, now um, we were talking about bookers reaching out to you. I think that coming soon, not even I think, I know that coming soon, bookers going to be looking for more comedians nowadays because comedy clubs are going to be opening back up. Back up, baby. Back up. So the world, listen, I don't, I guess the coronavirus numbers are going down a little bit, whatever, but the, yeah. but the, but the world and the economy is like, we need to open up. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I guess um, I've seen in, in New York here, there's April 2nd, comedy clubs will be open. You know in New York, saying? April 2nd? April 2nd. I don't think, there, there is like a minimum capacity though. You know what I'm saying? So it's not going to be able to be like sold out shows, but they will be open. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And, you know, so it's, it's kind of like some traction to like, okay, maybe we get some normalcy back in the comedy world. You know what I'm saying? Um, one thing that I did see though was that they already are setting up bringer shows. <laughs> I feel you would think of all things the pandemic would get rid of its bringers, uh, but I guess not. Yeah, for for the audience, bringer shows are when comedians can't perform unless they bring five people to the show that are paying. Sometimes to get in. ten. Ten? You ha- you did it? You, have you heard of a ten person bringer? I have. I haven't done one, but yeah, no. There's like some like you could really pack people in. Now that I think about it, I can't really actually think of an event that it was 10, so maybe it's just an ideation in my head. Uh, but I feel like it exists. There's probably 10 deep bringers out there. That's insane, man. If you ah, great. this is this is this is word to any comedian listening to this, any performer listening to this. If you have 10 people willing to come see you perform anywhere, produce your own show. Period. All you need is 10 people. I've done shows that I produce with less. <laughs> you know what know. I'm saying? Make sure to ask each of those 10 people to bring five people that they know <laughs> and let them know that they'll have to pay uh get at least two drinks maybe three um it's never three i like just making up numbers now yeah that's so w- where have you heard not necessarily the venues who heard these bringer shows but is it like now like outdoor shows they're doing these bringers or are they this is specifically comedy clubs oh. comedy clubs in new york already setting up bringer shows you know what i'm saying i don't know what the incentive is i guess like if they're if they're a venue like if they have a show in a venue and the whole purpose is to get the venue money i mean not the whole purpose but a big part of it if bringers make sense in some way no listen bringer if you own a comedy club you're the owner bringers make sense a hundred percent of the way like they make perfect sense you get some comedians to bring the audience who have to pay to get in we have a two drink minimum. That makes perfect sense for the for the um, club owners. I don't mm. knock against them, you know what I'm saying? But just comedians need to take heed that though, if you got enough backing to bring 10 people to a show, or whatever, you might want to look into producing your own shows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's but it kind of it's kind of like when you first when you're a beginner comedian, you know, when you first start out, you know what I'm saying? That's that's what bringer shows are for. You know what I'm saying? Like when you just trying to get some footage at a comedy club, you're trying to you know, yeah. you don't really know what's, what the world is like in the comedy world. That's what bringer shows are for. My first open mic was a bringer show. It wasn't even a bringer show. It was a bringer like, it was a bringer showcase slash open mic. Okay. Um, so I had to bring people. And it, the thing with bringers is like, because it mainly is for like, it's mainly used within like new people. But like, if you're new, a lot of times you don't want to show your newness. You don't, like, you don't really have material. So you're yeah. bringing your 10 closest people that are willing <laughs> to pay yep. to see you at a phase where you're not completely ready to be displaying that for some people, some people, you know, kill it the first and a few times and all that stuff. But yeah, the whole idea of it seems very much like a, a talent show. It feels very like a, like a camp, like a theater camp situation. Like, oh, okay, we're all, we're this person, we're coming to see them try. Uh, we know we're <laughs> not going to be rolling on the ground, but Hey, they're going to try. They're out there yeah. trying now. Look, look at them go. <laughs> Just that fixed smile on your face. Ah, yes, this is, you're bringing me joy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that. Um, so 
Um, no. Yeah, man. I, like I said, I, I think Bringer Show is a good idea for the owner of the club. But I just thought it was very interesting, like, limited capacity, but we're doing a Bringer. It's just like, you don't want me to bring a lot of people. You know I know, what I mean? Yeah. You could only bring one and a half people. Uh, when you do a bringer, like say if they're like, hey, we have a bringer show, um, three to five people, and it's one of our first comedy shows back up, and it's like a good venue. I mean, I don't think I don't think I would. I'm not going to say completely no, but I don't think I would. Like, I've performed at pretty much a lot of these venues without bringer situations. Right. You know what I mean, so it's kind of like, why would I? No, how about you just book me? Because another thing with the bringer shows is you don't get paid for them. I mean, mm. it's, so I've, I actually had, I remember my, when I first started out, I had an interaction with a, with a, um, a, co- a comedian slash booker at one of these bringer shows. And he said, you got to bring five people. Each person has a two drink minimum and it costs $15 to get in. Right. So I did the math and I'm like, yo, you're going to make at least $180 at least. And I get the, and then I got to perform in like, work perform you know what i'm saying and i don't get any money like i don't get anything at all still like, doing the math on that equation yeah it, it was like 100 and, it was like 180 dollars when i came up in my head because like two drinks like in new york is like at least 20 dollars you know what i mean yeah. so it's like oh okay, yeah no the other i'm thinking yeah okay i'm thinking first like five times 15 but you're also putting on like the extra stuff that comes with going to a comedy show right so they pay all yeah. They're paying all this money. And I said to him, this is, mind you, I was still new in comedy, but this this whole thought process, in my, I was like, it didn't make sense. And I said to the guy, I was like, so you're doing all this and I don't get any money. He was like, well, you'll get um a free tape of your set. I'm like, well, I'm probably going to bomb anyway. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the incentive. That's the incentive. They did that, you know, not even necessarily like a negative way, but that's what happened on my first time. And I was like, okay, well, we're going to give you a tape and we'll be able to talk to you with feedback after um and you know what i could see how that's helpful for some not necessarily the tape part's kind of cool just like oh yeah i have the tape first time it's stand up sort of thing but it's also cool the idea of like all right maybe you don't know a lot about comedy mine hopefully you know the booker isn't like a total piece of shit but if like if they're willing to like actually like give you advice and feedback or you maybe even talk to you beforehand which is what the booker did with me we had like a 40 minute conversation it felt like I was paying for a membership to get into comedy. And at that point in time, I was willing to do that. Right. I listen, I understand. I've done bring a show. The, uh, the competition where I won the new comedian of the year hey. in Baltimore, that was a, that whole thing was a bringer. Like I had mm. to bring five people to each show. So I'm not right. saying I'm against it. I just thought it was crazy that if you can't book, if you can't fill a comedy club at 30% capacity, why you know what i mean like come on man yeah like, no it, it makes more so just get actual not actual comics but yeah you know get people that have established sets and then get it in that way um shouts to people that are willing to try it out i mean i i, th- I imagine there's a lot of people that started comedy like around february 2020 mm-hmm. and then they're like ah this is my thing i love it it's uh giving me a sense of value oh yes and then they don't have it. Um, so then perhaps they they may do some bringers. Yeah, I know another thing um, I did by accident, what's today? Two days ago by accident, I did a indoor show by accident. Ooh, how'd that play out? It was the, it was the most terrifying. <laughs> it was an open mic. It was the most terrifying open mic I have ever done ex- besides the first one I've ever done. Oh, wow. Dog. In New York or this Pennsylvania? In, in Brooklyn. Okay. So let me break it down for you. I didn't I didn't even post this on social media. That's how terrified I was about this. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna talk to Kirk about this shit. Listen to me. So they put a post out and it was like, yo, we're doing an outdoor mic. Sign up, right? Message me to do a sign up, right? So I'm like, okay, I'll message, I'll do an outdoor mic. It was nice this day. It was nice. And I was like, I'm gonna do the outdoor mic. That's that works for me. But then like as it got later, it just got colder and colder and windier and windier. And a message is like, yo, we're going to transfer the mic to indoors, right? He's like, do you still want to do it? You know, because he already know I don't want, I'm, I'm uncomfortable doing indoors. So I was like, but, but I was already like working on my jokes. I was already amped up. It was like an hour away. Like 
that, that it was like eight o'clock. It started at nine. I was like, mm. yo. He was like, well, we had a door open. It's going to be distance. I was like, he said, everybody's going to wear a mask. So I said, I'm going to do it. Nice. I'm going to do it. All right. So, so, so me and my girl, we walk in this joint, right? And everybody got their mask on except for the first performance. It's only like 12 comedians in there. You know what I'm saying? No big deal, right? So I was like, okay, this isn't terrible. You know what I mean? But, Kurt, when I tell you, I've never been more scared at open mic after what I'm about to tell you. Bro, while a comedian was performing indoors, a rat ran behind him. Oh, no. <laughs> behind you? At, behind the comedian that was on stage. Oh, oh rat. Wow. Yeah, well. Bro, <laughs> this was the most terrifying <laughs> five minutes I've ever done in my life. And for those that don't know, you have a, quite, quite the relationship with mice and rats. I have a, the yeah. extreme phobia. I am terrified. Damn. My girl looked at me. was like, "Do you want to go? Do you want to?" <laughs> <laughs> I was, but I was like, "Yo, I can't. I'm here now." Like, I, 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 oh my, I was so, I was so scared during my five minutes. I told, I told everybody, "Listen, I got a huge rat phobia." I told a little rat joke real quick. I said, if "Y'all see, if y'all see this rat behind me, say something because I'll be done. I'm done." <laughs> Yo. Uh that's wild man it's i love the idea of a performer on stage freaks out because they see a rat and then in the background they hear ah like, they, <laughs> like, like they're like oh i have no idea what's going on i wouldn't I, even get I on picked, stage listen i picked my feet up my feet weren't on the ground anymore after they said it's all the rat because i didn't see the rat i, I didn't see it so like I, I just had my legs up like off the ground like on the chair i was, <laughs> was terrified that's how you adopt a style of sitting on the stool now. So why does he do that? Well, there's a mice incident. And, uh, damn. Well, I'm glad you made it out. I hope the rat was wearing a mask and such. And that kind of kept you going there. That's um, gross. Giros. You got to hit up open mics with Raid next time. Uh, yeah, I, don't I don't know. If, is Raid getting mice? Or is that just cockroaches? I, I think you can no, raid mice. Is, we talking about a rat, though. This wasn't a mouse. Oh, uh, yeah. A rat. Raid. You can't raid a rat can't do that you need, a, you need a bat for a rat damn mm. yeah. next time man you know uh next time you're performing out there you know, challenge yourself to put your feet on the ground and if a rat comes through a rat comes through no it's no. not happening i would I, I was shake i was shaking it was just so because i was already nervous because i'm indoors at an open mic i haven't i haven't even performed actually in like two months at least and those things already had me like anxious and then the fucking rat bro i was whoo it was the most scariest open mic i've ever done in my life how are you and, feeling about being able to perform i know you haven't been able to do that in a while i mean i'm good i'm good um i still would like to stay outdoors i don't think i'm gonna do another indoor on purpose again like i would um i've actually been i got some premises that i, I want to flush out you know what i'm saying but it was okay it was it was good and it was I felt good. I was nervous as fuck. The audience couldn't tell, though, or the comedians couldn't tell. But hmm. did you feel uh, less anxious about being indoors after the situation, like post event? How do you feel? A, a, I'm not gonna lie. I feel a little less. Ang- I had my mask on the whole time. Like people were performing without their mask. I kept mine on because I don't. I don't know how droplets work, but I'm pretty sure they don't just leave. So yeah. like, I kept my mask on the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So. But I am, I am a little less anxious. So like, if I got paid, if I got paid to do like something significant indoors, I might think about it twice before I turn it down this time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's a good step of like breaking that barrier, even if it isn't 100% safe. I think that's, if it's like at a range of like 60, 80%, I think that's a good barrier to go over to kind of integrate yourself back into the normal life, at least with performing. Um, yeah. Cause that's how I felt. It wasn't until like actually doing something indoors that I recognized like, okay, this isn't, this isn't a death sentence to go inside somewhere. Yeah. Um, so doing kind of like using some logic with it um, is also helpful. So glad you got to do it. Glad you're safe and all that stuff. Watch out for the rats. It's yeah. What about the bunnies though? Oh, is bunny talking about them Lola bunnies? Talking about those Lola bunnies. Yo, listen, man. 
I've been, you know, I've been on Twitter a lot more recently, man. And I, I realized with Twitter, you see a lot more controversy than you, that you wouldn't see elsewhere. Because, like, I might have seen, like, one post about it on Facebook, no post about it on Instagram. But people were upset because the new Space Jam, mm. I guess the trailer came out. Or yeah. I don't know what it was, whatever. But, like, I didn't see the trailer. But people were upset because Lola Bunny's titties are big. What? Yeah. Nice. No, I got didn't. Some, got some knockers. And they were... Like why really? they were showing like split screen from like the first Space Jam and this one like she got like she went to see Doctor Miami or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, and what are, what's the criticism about it? Is it like a, on kind of like sexism sort of thing? Yeah, like why would you have to give the bunny big boobs? Like what you know? Lola, and I I I guess I don't because Lola Bunny she's always kind of been a sex symbol. Wait, producer Pat says it's the reverse. I'm looking up Lola Bunny right now. Hold up. Turns out she's already on my screen. Uh, Space Jam 2. Wait, so she was set. So which one she had bigger boobs? Was the last one or this one? Damn, she looks fine in both of them, though. I can't tell which one's... Oh, okay. What's it saying? Uh, It's not necessarily saying anything. I'm just kind of... <laughs> I'm over here comparing breast size of a cartoon right now trying to decide <laughs> which one's bigger and smaller so that's what i've been reduced to. <laughs> um i'm gonna put lola bunny space champ to breast controversy uh oh boy i don't want this in my search engine uh, uh, <laughs> so this is so good what's what is all right on? all right lola bunny desexualized for space jam 2 and people are annoyed oh it's the other way so you were right I didn't. I didn't uh, do enough research. They were mad that she wasn't sexy enough. Uh, <laughs> what perverts! What perverts! <laughs> oh man, yeah. I mean, it's that's a weird thing to do because it's like, all right. So, say if it was the other way around. Say if the report was that she has bigger breasts than the first one. It's completely plausible that there would have been outrage over that. It could have yeah. gone both ways. So I think it's just another example of people wanting to be mad at something. People That's what playing. I thought. Yeah. I, when, I seen the, when I seen the controversy and I seen the pictures, I assumed that it was the other way around because this way, it's like, wait, you guys are mad because this cartoon isn't sexy enough? Like, that's <laughs> that's really weird, guys. <laughs> really- <laughs> and at the same time, man, Lola Bunny, she was always fly. There's a there's particular... Um, I don't want to get in trouble for this, but there's like, I feel, I find that there's prototypes for different type of people. Like there's some dudes that have strong jaw bones and they look like Hugh Jackman. Um, there's a lot of women I find that uh, maybe because they'll have like a ponytail and when you pet it, it feels like a bunny. I'm like, oh, she kind of looks like Lola Bunny. And I feel like there's, but Lola Bunny has been a prototype for not just, I won't just say just like women, but like definitely like some of my crushes in the past um so I, I get why people are attaching uh uh some sexual relation with the cartoon because they grew up having a crush on the person or cartoon yeah so what you just did was you pretty much admitted that you watch anime porn that's pretty much what you just did. Oh, you know i won't you know i'm not saying it's a bad thing uh you know i've i've, I've scrolled and it, it it happened there but you know it's not not my go-to um yeah. maybe and you had crushed on cartoons right um what's the one what's the one i'm thinking about scooby-doo roger, roger rabbit um what <laughs> not, not oh roger jessica rabbit, rabbit. All right. jessica rabbit yeah <laughs> not roger rabbit i didn't want i didn't want to <laughs> I, no, roger. I think it's but, well, just like I, I jokingly say scooby-doo you're like no 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 roger Rabbit. <laughs> 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 yeah uh-huh. I, yeah no i didn't i mean that would be the only cartoon that i could think of yeah there wasn't not nyla yeah, uh, from Lion King? Yeah. The, the, the lion? The animal? The lioness. Yes. Listen, I'm not a, I'm, I guess, I guess uh, Roger Rabbit is a, or Jessica Rabbit's a rabbit. So I guess. No, no, she's a person. Wait. She was, <laughs> so, yeah. She was, yeah. A, she was like the comically, she has very large breasts with I, red hair, right? I can't see me on Nala because Nala's a four legged, I mean, walking on four legs. You got to at least stand up. You got on two feet. It'd be sexy to me. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's a good rule. I guess that's a that's a rule you can have. <laughs> it's your prerogative. You gotta have you gotta have two feet. Sorry, ladies in wheelchairs. Um, but <laughs> no, but listen, yeah, I just so this this makes this makes this conversation 
actually more wackier and weirder now that they're saying like, ah, oh, we want that bunny to be sexy. I don't know. It's just well, they're gonna. You know what they did with um, what was that movie Big Hero Six? It was like a oh, Disney yeah. movie. Yeah, and they had like um, I guess the kid. There's a character named Aunt Cass that looked after like the main protagonist, and what they've done with her is disastrous. Um, they pretty much they, they photoshopped uh, her having larger breasts and every shot of her which was having cleavage in this movie she's wearing a full-blown shirt like if you haven't seen the movie you and you just see the memes you're gonna think like wow they made a really sexy aunt for this and just be disappointed when you watch the movie um so I, there's there's been a long history of people sexualizing cartoons um i think i think i think a lot of times it's a, a disconnect from a i don't know a further disconnect from uh, humans in a way of like okay it's easier to have it's easier to have fantasies of a cartoon because maybe i struggle with real life uh situations so it's i don't know maybe it's just a, a wacky way of me saying like that's people's fantasy it makes it makes sense you can't get real women so you think about getting fake women i get it mm. it makes it makes sense to me like i never thought about it like that but yeah like yeah, that, that, that makes perfect sense. Oh, like, would you, you date a cartoon? Would I date a cartoon? Yeah. No, nah, man. I don't like fake bitches. Bro, I think <laughs> I I think I'd date a cartoon. I honestly think that. I, I know you would. I I no, nothing in me doesn't think you wouldn't. I yeah, know you would. You're kind of nice, man. I'm kind of like I was I haven't actually thought of like, oh wow, what if like I don't know, what I want what if went on a drive with a cartoon? That'd be I don't know. I'm thinking on cast right now. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm like, all right, you know, that's that would actually be kind of cool. The closest thing you could get to dating a cartoon would be a blow up doll. Bro, would you date a blow up doll? There's people out here that are in relationships with full blown, no pun intended, blow up dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Not these half blown blow up dolls. This blow up doll got no air in her. That's why. Um, that's where I draw the line. I would not date a blow up doll. Um, yeah. Also. I'm pretty sure they're expensive. But not the blow, like there's blow-up dolls that are like, oh, here's a blow-up doll. And it's probably like, I'm afraid of like throwing estimates out there because it's sounding like I looked into blow-up dolls. I did not look into blow-up dolls. Um, but I imagine they're probably like in the hundreds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's that's not that expensive compared to a real woman over time. I mean, <laughs> I mean real women, you got to take them out to eat. You got to buy them gifts for their birthday. You may have to get, you may get their hair or nails done, yeah, whatever they're into. You know what I'm saying? Blow up dollars is a one time purchase, the down payment. Is <laughs> <laughs> Keep in mind, though, ladies' proper bonics, ladies' proper bonics. We know that you like to treat us men, too. You know, you like to take us to the Jamaican shop, get us some oxtail and rice. That sounds good right now. Oxtail. I, I haven't, I actually can't eat. We weren't going to plan to talk about this, but I, I've actually been vegan for a week. What? Yeah. Damn, you're on a little challenge right now. Why I'm, on, I'm on a little challenge. I've been vegan. I, I don't know if I told you. I'm pretty sure I told you before, like, we do, like, vegan days. You did do that, home. yeah. But you're going for the so, week. Yeah, I stepped it up. I was like, I'm going to do a week. Oh, sure. I've been, I've been vegan this whole week, you know what I'm saying? I feel healthy. I mean, I'm ready to just fight any carnivore I see. <laughs> you, you repulse me, you meat eaters. No. What is the... What's the not the goal necessarily like i think it's obvious what the the benefits can be but what, what are you looking to get out of it yo i like to just challenge myself i've realized okay. that like um I'll, I'll stop smoking for a couple i haven't smoked in like two months oh, um, wow. i'll stop drinking for a little bit i just i challenge i work out like i'll do push-ups for like a month like i like to challenge myself from time to time just to see if i can do it like just yeah. to know that i have control over myself like not i'm just just victim to this this, I don't know this, this chicken, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like yeah, to, I, I totally got that, man. It's just like, because it's not even necessarily to think like, okay, well, this meat or, you know, whatever, like if you're drinking or whatever, this doesn't control me sort of thing. But it's kind of, in my opinion, good to step away for a second and be like, oh, wait, do I actually need this though? This is in my regimen. This is something I do, but does it control me? Am I dependent on it? And with challenges like this, it kind of like allows you to explore life without it. And see how much control you have. So I think it's good. Yeah, and I think that is, it's a little deeper for me too because like dependency is something I dealt with, I, I deal with. You know what I mean? Like, like my grandmother 
did drugs. My grandmother was alcoholic, and I see a lot of her in me. Mm. And I don't, and I don't, and I don't, I don't want that. And I'm like, no, that's not me. You know what I mean? So I kind of like, I'll take a break from substances, or I'll take a break from drinking, or I'll take, you know what I mean? I'll, I'll just to see, just to make sure I, that's not me. Like I can't control this. I'm not a, a victim to to the to the substance or whatever I'm doing. You know what I mean? Or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. It doesn't necessarily be a substance. You'd be like, damn, I'm eating Skittles every day. Let me go like a few days without Skittles sort of thing. Um, no, man, I salute that. I salute that, man. With that, uh, you want to get in some goals? Uh, and I want to try to complete this goal uh, by a week from now. Um, I want to watch uh, Coming to America too. Oh, good I've, I have not watched Come to America. It just got released. Um, so that's my goal. I, I, I Sometimes I don't set time apart to like sit down and watch a movie. I'm going to sit down and watch this movie. That's my goal. That's a, that's a good goal. I, that's going to be one of my goals. I'm, I'm going to piggyback on that goal. I have, a, I have another goal, but that's one something I want to do this weekend is watch Coming to America. Um, my goal is I want to get in 10,000 steps each day i got a fitbit <laughs> damn you're turning into a mom what's you're so like fun, a, what's so what's so funny about that kirk huh what's you're getting so funny? your steps in you're dodging meat trucks like <laughs> why are you trying to get those steps in bro because man my, my girl bought me a fitbit because she got a fitbit and i'd be trying i'd be on her like yo you gotta get your steps in she's like nigga you better get your steps in <laughs> <laughs> what does it do does it like does it check your heart rate as well I'm not sure. So I literally got it yesterday nice. and I got to download the app on my phone, but I got uh-huh. so much, so many apps and so many videos on my phone. I got to make, I got to make space. Yeah. I got to delete, I got to delete stuff. So I want to go on it and I, I'm not sure if it checks my heart rate. My heart rate's pretty cool. I'll be chilling like a motherfucker, mm. but um, I want to check my steps. Cause I just be a lot of times I'll spend hours just like laying on my, in my bed on my phone, just like scrolling mm. all the apps and you know what I'm saying? With this, going it's going to be like, hey, I haven't gotten any steps in. I've gotten under 20 steps a day, but I've been on Instagram for 20 hours. So I've yes. got to like kind of balance that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get, I want to do, I think it's 10,000 I want to do each day just to see. Like, I don't know how many steps, I may just do that easily. Like, I don't right. even know. Like, I have no idea what I do. You know what I mean? good. Yeah, I don't know how much steps I take either. No, it's good. Now you get to like to actually see, like, how much do I walk per day? <laughs> Yeah, it's huh. gonna be like seventy-eight steps a day. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Well, I went to the bathroom. Um, no, that's cool, man. You're you're on your health game right now. I think I, I admire that. I be I try I be trying a little bit. I'm not I'm not like a health nerd. I I never been like the one to work out a lot. I, I that's not my thing. But mm. like I try to take care of myself a little bit. You know what I'm saying? A little bit. Yeah, man. That's always so, good. I was jumping the pole yesterday. That was a, that's my exercise I do out here. There's like a, it's almost like a bike rack that's on grass. It's just like a large pole, but it's not a bike rack. It just have a large pole. That's like six feet long. Anyway, um, I, I run around there and then I find the pole that's like on, it's on the ground like this two poles. And then there's like a long bar connecting those poles. So uh, I just go there and I jump over that bar for 10 laps so like i'll jump over boom then turn around jump over it again and i'll be one lap um it really gets the heart going so if you, you see a six foot pole get that going bro get it going i, mean, I see i see one every time i go to the bathroom uh, yeah, hey! I, I walked into that i did, I did. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. you were talking the whole time like i'm going to reference my pole when he's done <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm so immature i know no, but I want to go. I want to go back though. I want to take a step back, and I want to talk about coming to America. Coming to America. So, I one thing. This is something I'm. Gonna, I'm gonna put this on you, and I apologize for putting this on you because Uh-oh. I hate when it's put on me. But I think it's something that we need to talk about. People need to hear this. I hate when people put out their takes on things before I see it because then it influences my opinion subconsciously. Oh, that's I hate very that. true. I hate that. So you don't re- read reviews before seeing something? Never. Okay. Never. All right. Interesting. I don't even know where you get reviews from, honestly. Where do you get? Shout out to Ebert Roper. 
um, or RogerEbert.com. He has, he's still got something going over there. Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I, I don't check out those sites. I, I never check out those sites, but, and, but I wouldn't because I don't like to be influenced. I like to literally just go into it openly and just take my ticket away from it, what I got from it. You know what I'm saying? So, because that was my follow up, what is Streak saying about this movie? But the <laughs> Streaks are trashing this movie, bro. Whoa, what? Oh, no. They are, I don't think I've seen some, some of the Streaks trash something this bad since they've been trashing. Kevin Hart stand-ups like this is I mean the streets first of all all right you know shouts to the streets always um but the streets tend to be wrong like a lot like just like you said like last time when they were trashing Kevin Hart's thing it's like Kevin Hart's last special is pretty funny I I like it the whole time yeah I like it I'm not leaving it to the streets on this one the streets are always looking for reasons to hate I agree. I agree. But it was like, I know uh, it's on Amazon Prime. They dropped, they dropped it uh, coming to America like Thursday night, like late Thursday night or whatever. Like surprise drop. And I thought people were going to be like, oh, snaps, coming to America drop. And like immediately, they were just like killing this movie. I'm like, how are you going to kill this movie? Mm-hmm. Like, it, okay. You can have you can have your opinion on movies you can have your opinion on people's art you can have your opinion but at some point yo and most of the people that i follow especially on facebook are comedians who would have given their leg to be in this movie you know what i mean so it's kind of like y'all gotta stop publicly <laughs> bashing this kind of stuff bro you, i don't think they understand what it's doing to the ecosystem what it's doing to what they want out of the world you're putting all this negative energy into the world where you want positive from in the same workspace like you want to be that yeah. how do you want to be that but you're bashing that publicly you can have your opinion cool you can say it's bad but i'm talking about i've seen comedians going in multiple statuses mm, using it like, for content i don't know man i just it's i don't like a- i don't agree with it i, do, I don't agree with the you I, another thing another thing before that mm. you get a word in <laughs> mm, that's you good I feel I feel like it's black it's black shit, yo. We gotta mm. stop putting down black stuff. We gotta mm. stop in front of the white man. We gotta stop doing that mm. because, like, you're taking away again. You're taking away from what you want out of the world. Like, you want to be this. You, you want be more a- black entertainment sort of thing. Yeah. Like, if we're gonna, if one of the big ones to come out this year and it's gonna ultimately trash it, um, it doesn't seem as supportive. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it's almost like if you're on LinkedIn and you work like say uh, you work like in shoes and then like you're publicly trashing every move that Puma makes. That's a weird analogy, but it's like, I don't I know. It like, makes sense. Yeah, it's just like you don't have to do that. And I think, and it kind of goes back to our point from before, a lot of times people, they feel obligated to speak on stuff that's happening in pop culture, whether that be a good or bad. And I think comedically speaking, a lot of people take the route of bad because it's easier to make a joke off something that's bad than it is good. Um, so sometimes they may not even fully feel that way, or maybe they do, who knows, but to actually go out there and post it for that like short-term grad, excuse me, gratification, I don't, I don't, I think a lot of people are just pulled to like, all right, I need to have a point of view and I need to have a point of view on all things. And now I need to post it. I think that's a, a big part of it. I think I would be less mad if they were making jokes. Like, uh, so there's like <laughs> no jokes, just like, just I didn't like this movie. Your shit was trash coming to America. <laughs> what is it like? It was just, it just be like coming to America coming was to, trash. Com- Six yeah. laughing emojis. It's like yeah. coming to this trash can. That's what I thought of this movie. <laughs> like, it don't be like if it was a funny to, joke, I'm return I'm like, this ah, movie. That's funny. Yeah. Like, you feel free to use that coming to trash if you want to take that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hop on Facebook right after this. <laughs> coming to trash and log out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's goofy. I think, and that's another thing, man, you know, like it's nice. It's nice not being exposed to that. Right. And I, I, I don't know. Now I know kind of what uh, at least the Twitter streets are saying about the movie, but I don't know what people are saying about this movie yet. I'm going off of it just being 
uh, a s sequel to a classic with people that like in it. Yeah. Let's see how it is. Um, yeah. yeah, I get that. I sometimes people take to a, a different extent, and I'll do some mysteries a lot. I won't even watch the trailer if I know a movie's coming out that I want to see, uh -huh. and there may be a little bit element of a surprise in there. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to look it up. I'm not going to go on Reddit for it. And I'm going to watch a trailer. I'm just going to go right. in there and watch it. That's not a, listen, that's not a bad idea. I don't think I've ever taken it that far, though, where I wouldn't, I don't watch the trailer. I always like, when I'm interested it. in something, I'm like, yo, I got to see the trailer. I got to see the trailer. It's kind of nice. It's kind of nice going in there completely blind to what's going to happen, yeah. except for when the movie's bad. And that's like, I should have watched that trailer. Should have watched that trailer. <laughs> Fucked up, but not watching that trailer, man. Yeah, man, it's wasted twelve dollars and fifty cents, well, and a Wednesday night. Um, but something you know that, that just released its trailer and multiple videos for for an event that's happening tonight. Um, and I know people are listening to this afterwards, but some tells me they're still going to be talking about it around the time this this airs. Uh, UFC two fifty eight. Uh, three title belts are on the line for tonight. Not one, three title belts. Uh, that's rare huh yeah yeah you there's they stack this card um it's in america too they're doing it the at their apex center which i believe is I believe it's in los angeles no i'm sorry no it's probably in las vegas maybe either way um oh, so, so so ufc is coming to america that's cool oh man, yeah uh is it, it may be 259 damn i don't know enough about this event um uh, but i'm excited about it <laughs> it's gonna be uh so uh israel alessania uh, he's going for having two belts. He is the middleweight champion right now, and he's going up a weight class to fight levy, uh, light heavyweight. Uh, John Bakowitz, people I know that I'm mispronouncing John's last name. Please forgive me, the Polish bruiser. Um, but that's gonna John it's gonna B. be a good event. It's called, you can call him John B. JB, yeah, JB. Jan, damn, I got the first name wrong too. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm boning up on my Russian. However, the Polish, I still need some work on. <laughs> um, so yeah, man, that's that's gonna be a good event. Um, I kind of wanted to talk about this, of the idea of like, have you ever heard of the concept of cutting cutting weight? Yeah, it's like when you um drink a you you fucking need to catch hit to get lower weight, so you sweat a lot and you don't eat and you yeah yeah so it's like so a lot of times the whole thing with fighters they cut weight uh like but they have to like make a certain amount of weight at least 24 hours before the fight and i always wondered why that was and i realized it's a strategy that many fighters use so like say if you're if you want to fight at 155 pound division like a lightweight sort of thing you can be someone that's 170 pounds normally or someone that's bigger than that. And you will choose to fight at lightweight by cutting weight. That way you're eligible for that division. Mm -hmm. And then, then afterward you could like eat or do whatever you want to get back to somewhat of a normal weight. But I didn't realize it's mainly a strategy many fighters use to, so that way they're the bigger ones in the competition. Yeah. And after reading a bit more about it, I'm like, it's kind of a weird practice because people like they faint. Like you should see these people like they're like God, like they're you could see the cheeks, uh, like the bones in their cheeks because like they cut all this water weight out of their body for like so many hours. And you could tell like it has like an effect on them. I, I don't I want I'm curious to learn a little more of the history as to why that became a thing. That's that's not healthy. OK, no. to, to lose and gain any amount of weight quickly is not healthy they when i played uh little league football they they used to have kids cutting weight oh my goodness like we were had because we, we played we, we played according to your weight class so you play with your age so if you like say you play with your nine and ten year olds right yeah you play with nine and ten year olds but the but the weight limit was 97 pounds right mm. if you were over 97 pounds you had to play with the the 12, 11 and 12 year olds. So a lot of parents, but they would normally, it's like the kids that are like uh, maturing faster. And then usually like, I mean, honestly, the kids that are way more usually are like the best players. So what they would do is they would, I remember we used to have weigh-ins every morning for the games. We, there was always kids running around the track with trash bags on to, to lose weight for weigh-in 
just so they wouldn't have to play with the older kids, so they can play with their their age group and just be monsters. And this was yeah. every every Saturday. We, I'm talking about. I've seen this since I was eight years old. This is what they do in little league football. Do you ever have to? Because you played football for a little bit, right? Yeah, I, but I was never a big. I was never like a fat. By the time I started getting fat, I was already playing for my school. So okay. when you play for a school, your weight doesn't matter. It's just, you just you go to the school, you play for school. But when you're playing like age groups and like little league, like peewee football leagues, you had to be under a certain age. You know what I'm saying? Damn, I never thought of a kid cutting weight. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Damn, just get away from the Capri Sun, you're cutting weight here and there. Yes, it's very it's very unhealthy, man. And like, yeah, people you can see people faint like it's. It's, yeah, no. If and produce Pat, if you could put up um, a photo of Conor McGregor uh, versus you know during his uh, featherweight bout, um, I believe it was right before he faced Jose Aldo. Um, just how much weight it looked like he looks. You look like a completely different person. Yeah. And the whole thing is like you have 24 hours to like get back to your normal weight if you choose to do so, because then you have the bigger advantage after the weight cut is done. Uh, it's just a vicious one. I'm, I'm definitely going to look a little bit more into that. Uh, to learn a little more and a lot of times that dehydration plays into the concussions and ctes with less fluid available to protect the brain yeah not that's part of it too man that looks and that's now that's that's even scarier not you mentioned that when you talk about little kids playing football you know what i mean so like i know for a fact i've had plenty of concussions playing football so like imagine the kids that are like with less fluid near their brain that's it's dangerous man yeah that's dangerous should we cancel weight cutting yeah, for sure. Yes. Especially for kids. Yeah. I never actually took the forefront of canceling something. I think I may have to like, yeah, I could get a little movement going. Let's cancel yeah. weight cutting. Listen, you might be on something. You guys got to go fund me. Damn. Oh, man. If you don't cut weight properly, it can do long-term damage to your organs. Oh, my God. We got to cut. We got to cancel this. We got to <laughs> stop weight cutting. This has to... There's, yeah, no more dieting is correct. Yeah, <laughs> cut that out. Of course, of course, producer Pat is saying no more dieting. <laughs> <laughs> producer Pat, producer Pat, you know, I'm not gonna talk about producer Pat's body, but producer Pat, <laughs> oh, slim down. <laughs> yeah, you look, producer Pat looks good over there in San Fran right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, shots, producer Pat, and shots to Lamar Lee, shots to Lamar Lee. Uh, Lamar Lee, he's uh, come quite the slim gym. Oh, Lemire, Lemire been slimming down? Lemire's been slimming down, yeah. Last time I saw Lemire, granted, it was a year ago. So it was like, yeah, I guess it was a full-blown year. He was slimmed down, had a suit on. I was like, very, very nice, Lemire. I was, I was very Wait, happy to see that. Producer passed that him and Lemire are doing a sumo, rat, a sumo match July 4th. Weekend. I guess a year has passed him. All right, I guess. <laughs> I can't tell if Pat's joking or not. No, he's serious. He said, no joke. It's in New Jersey. So look, people, you gotta be on the lookout. If you want to see producer Pat and Lamar Lee have a sumo match wearing big thongs, it's going down this summer. Yeah, don't try to cut weight for it. Don't try to cut weight. <laughs> don't try to do that, man. No, I think I think sumo wrestlers are the only ones that don't cut weight. They try to gain weight for their match. It's the old betting UFC style embedded one. Yeah, that's I. I'm gonna investigate on this later. I'm like, what, what, are, you, what are you guys talking about? Sumo wrestling match? Very curious. To see what they're talking yeah. about. So so the so the night so the night's a UFC match. You mentioned the one with the guy cutting the weight. Who are the other two battles? Yeah, so Amanda Nunes, um, she's she's another double champ. She's a banderweight women and a flyweight. She's defending her fly. Oh no, the bantamweight. She's defending her bantamweight title uh, against uh, Megan. Uh, what what is it, what is her name? Megan Anderson. Megan Anderson. Um, so she who's like six foot tall um huge frame uh long reach which is uh, different from mana nunez but mana nunez is just if you haven't seen her fight before she's she's been unstoppable um the other one is going to be uh aljamain sterling um who's from jamaica um he's fighting out in new york um he's going against i believe peter yan um and that's for the men's bantamweight uh title that one's going to be a good one that one's going to be a nice fight um because there's some uh, genuine animosity between the two um oh, and they're also very yeah it's they're very both very technical with uh sterling b mooring on the wrestling side of it it's gonna be entertaining man 
it's always good when people have like prior beef before the fight. It's always- I know. Yeah. That's the one thing I'm like tempted to get on Twitter for because like UFC fighters are very theatrical with their, I think they're encouraged to be very much like WWE about it. Yeah. It's like, all right, you can take a turn down or not. Um, and yeah, it was trained by Matt Sarah uh, Sterling, which is pretty cool to see too, which is another UFC great. So yeah, I think they actually pay, I know they paid like, like boxers extra to promote like that, like to do crazy promotion on like online and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm pretty sure they get a more, get a bigger purse when they talk shit on Twitter and things like that. Yeah, no, I get that. I definitely get that. Um, we've been going for a while. Let's get some quick prop suggestions. My prop suggestion for this episode. Um, a lot of times people are hesitant to like go get stuff checked out. You know, we're, we're in our 30s now and all that stuff. There can be alignments and all that. Uh, maybe and people are, you know, the cost of it, they don't want to go to the hospital. They don't want to go see a doctor. Um, I want my prop suggestion is to look into the financial uh, assistance program that any hospital or facility that you go to has. Uh, say you're like, you're 30 years old or whatever, you know, you, you, one night, like randomly, your, your right testicle just aches. Like what, why is it aching so much? You go up to go pee and it just aches even more. And you're like, oh my gosh, just like testicular t- torsion. You're freaking out a little bit. You're like, ah, I can go to the, maybe, you know, find a local hospital, mainline health um, and maybe get it checked out that way. Um, and then if you do the financial assistance program that they have, um, many of which you just have to look up hospital financial assistance next to it. And usually it'll be like an income driven plan that way it can minimize your hospital bills or even just outpatient visit bills uh, for any procedures you have. A lot of people don't know about it. And, um, I think it's a good service. That's a, that's a good suggestion. I really like that suggestion because I actually have my checkup next, next Wednesday. So, Mm. Is, are they good. are they gonna do any uh, checking of the testicles? I think they I think they will. They they gonna need they I mean, they, they do they make me do the coughing thing like <clears throat> you know that whole thing. As as yeah. a kid, it always made me laugh. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. It always it always tickled when they when I cough and they always hold my balls. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I remember there was always like a they'd have like an old doctor and there'd be a nurse in there. I'd be like, why is a nurse in here? And as an adult now, I'm like, oh, I get why there's a nurse. <laughs> it's, you, have, you have like this grown, grown person uh, examining uh, nude boys. It's like, oh, I get that. Um, now I'm grateful. Were you completely naked? <laughs> no, but you were not supposed to be complete. Kurt was standing in the dog's office, no clothes on, just socks. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. Because they examine like your chest too. They like they like put like a, they're like yo breathe. So like it's easier you just take everything off. I think yo, that's how no, that happened. No man, you was you was touched by the doctor. That's not okay. Well, you're right. You've been you've been to some traumatic experiences. If you were in a doctor's office completely naked, bro, there's no reason you should have been grabbing your ankles with no clothes on. Okay, there's no reason. No, it's like you know like if they're doing like a. You know, like they do like the knee tests to like check your uh, your reflexes and like they check your chest and your back to just deep breathe and then the whole testicle thing. Just they, just lift, they just lift your shirt up, bro. <laughs> I was in a different state, mind you. I was in New York, so maybe it was a little bit different there where I was like, yeah, it's kind of. Yeah, when, when, the, when the governor is Cuomo, it makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, he was, I, I don't know who the, the governor was at the time. It was in upstate New York. Yeah, no, I'll have, to, I'll have to try to bring that memory up. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're just nude. No, man. Producer Pat said you were traffic. I was not traffic. I was not traffic. Um, that's why, like, they have a nurse in there to make sure nothing crazy happens. It's like, all right, you know, Yo, get nude. The doctor's going to do his thing. They ran a train on you. That's why she was in there. They did not run a train on me. They did not run a train on me. I don't think they oh, ran a train shit. on me. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm in good health right now. I'm in good health, man. Hey, yo, that's crazy. Yo, I literally just took my daughter to the doctor's office last week, and they just lift they lift the shirt up from the back, and no, man, there's no need to be naked in there. No. You ain't, they didn't even give you a hospital gown. You were just sitting on the fucking, <laughs> on that tissue paper ass naked. <laughs> How wild would that be if 
this is an actual thing that shouldn't have happened. <laughs> <laughs> like all the other kids were like yeah they just lifted our shirt <laughs> ask your brother though. your brother gonna tell you like no nah, Kurt it didn't happen man. <laughs> maybe I'm just remembering I don't know I don't know man huh. you, were, you, you had your clothes on bro ask your mom you had your clothes on there's no way you were sitting in there in some socks with your ass cheeks on that crumbling the crumble paper stuff it ain't no way man i don't think you can even think of it that way if like you're a kid it's not like all right here's my kid hey, you know i'm a kid here's my ass cheeks like i don't think ass cheeks exists it's like as a kid it's like oh yeah it's a child's butt like it's, it's like, ass cheeks don't exist yeah that's not a i don't think people are like oh i don't i don't know i mean there's a lot of crazy stuff out there so who knows but yeah i guess i'll have to do some deep diving later on oh shit that's the doctor said all right, I'm done. 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 Ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm done. Look, I hope your your primary care visit goes well and everything's okay with your testicles. They're not tangled I'm up. Walk, I'm gonna walk in and doctor gonna be like, "Why do you have your clothes off?" That's what Kurt said to do. I don't. <laughs> and they'd be like, "All right, well, you know what? That is easier. <laughs> it's easier. Usually, we do the whole shirt, shirt, uh, whatever. I'm, not, I'm sorry, losing my I'm words. Sorry. Lose my words here. Got me flustered." <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Okay, let's let's get to my suggestion. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, go buy a bike. That's my suggestion. Everybody should get. You a just bike. saw someone ride a bike and was like, "Oh yeah, that'll be my suggestion." <laughs> no, I literally wasn't. That wasn't my suggestion. I didn't just get that from seeing. No, I was thinking about it because okay. I, I I think I said this as a my suggestion or my goal like a year ago, and I never got a bike. So like, you did say that? Yeah. So yeah, I said that too, actually. Yeah, so that's that's my suggestion. I guess a suggestion slash goal: get a bike, man. Like bikes are so cool. Like my kids have bikes. We go. I can't say we go bike riding. They go bike riding. I just go walking next to them. Or, you take yeah, their bike yeah. afterward. Like it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, Dad, stop trying to willy. I'm like, chill, <laughs> chill. I bought this. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I want. I suggest everybody go get a bike and. If you don't have the money to spend, you can thrift the bike. You can definitely go to Goodwill, thrift store, wherever you go and get a thrifted bike. That's a that's quality probably, bike that way. Quality. That's probably what I'm going to do. Because I was I was thrifted the other day and I seen a guy get a bike and I was like, I want that bike. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go take his bike. <laughs> yeah, I, so, saw like, I saw a racer. I want a street racers at a thrift shop for $100. And usually they're like... It looked it was in good condition too. And I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, that's like a so yeah, def, that's definitely a good suggestion, man. Yeah. Get that so springtime bike going. Exactly. And you know, next week the weather's gonna it's gonna hit like 60 out here. You know what I'm saying? So like you're gonna bike to the closest outdoor comedy shop, man. You gotta, you gotta try <laughs> that out. You gotta try it out for that, man. Yeah. Um I wanna before we end things, I, I wanna make it be clear, you know, if, thank you for listening or perhaps watching the episode. You may have noticed I was was drinking this coffee this whole time and i just want to apologize to all my anti-straw people um i didn't put the straw in there i'm lying i put the straw in there and i'm realizing that could have been kind of reckless uh you know it's a i realize we're trying to go away from that i think i have a whole thing of paper straws i'm not a big fan and all that stuff um but if you're a sheets enthusiast and such uh, i want to apologize for my brand endorsement of wawa and uh straws no, nobody likes paper straws. We're all on the same page. One turtle has sinus issues, and now we gotta chew our straws. Now, like, I don't want to drink a drink and then my straw particles are in my mouth. What about what about my nostrils? Yeah, <laughs> you snorting this <laughs> the straw? Man? I it would be nice to be like, oh, okay, well, if we use uh, plastic and if we recycle accordingly, it wouldn't really be an issue. But then. It's not a matter, like sometimes it's not recycled. Sometimes even when it is recycled, it goes to the same spot anywhere. So I get it. I totally understand that fight. Um, and that's, I genuinely do sometimes feel, um, try to cut back on any sort of excessive use of plastic um, because of that, but not today. Yeah. <laughs> not today. Yeah, I need, need those plastic straws, man. I, I even went um, to a restaurant. I was just like North Carolina probably two years ago and they had metal straws. And I was oh, yeah. like, so these straws are, are used? I don't. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't like, I don't go to restaurants and drink off the cups. Why do I want to drink off somebody else's fucking straw? I don't know, bro. Are you like using their forks and spoons though? I'm I'm very cautious with that. 
I mm. am. I, I look at it. I, I may wipe it off and stuff. So uh, I'm, a, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say I got OCD, but you know, I washed my hands before it was cool. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Bruce Pat says he takes his shirt off. Uh, that's at the doctor's man. Uh, well, we're gonna split. I have a. I don't know what I have to do today. My roommate's gone. I think I'm just gonna enjoy having the place to myself. Yeah, you should do that, man. It's always it's always good when you got the house to yourself. You get to walk around like you're at the doctor's. You know, you're, you're already know. You're already know. I haven't stood up yet for a reason. Yeah. Um. So <laughs> yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a nice Saturday. Uh, what are you getting into? Um, about to open up this this shop. You know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm actually might go get me a bagel real quick. Nice. Open up, the, open up the shop. You know, what I'm saying trying to make this money. You know, what I'm saying you know everybody watching this. If you were in New York, come to uh, in Brooklyn. My girl got the whole got the whole market. You know what I'm saying? Thirty mm-hmm. different black owned businesses, brands, hair care, clothing, home goods, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Seven twenty seven Franklin Avenue. You know, come check us out. You know. And as always, it's in New York, not Philadelphia. Please don't go to the Franklin Street in Philadelphia. Uh, I've been telling you guys for weeks. I've made that mistake. Don't do that. <laughs> it's uh, check out shop in New York. You get to see uh, what was it? Uh, coral blossom. You get to see some of that, some of the interior design. That coral blossom was it's a beauty. Mm. Yeah. Nice chatting, you man. Uh, I'll be around and such. And uh, if you're listening, thank you for doing that. Peace. Peace.